Hi everybody, today I'm going to give you a tour of all the books I have in my library. My husband Caleb and I recently moved to a new house where I set up a new library and it's one of my favorite rooms in the house. So I hope you enjoy seeing it. So this is my library. It's at the end of the hall. It has a great window with lots of natural light. This is my desk where I do all my work, um, grading papers for work or writing or working on YouTube videos. There's some construction in the field outside, you can see there. Um, but it doesn't get too distracting most days. Most of my books are in this room, not all of them. I will do a part two to this video some other day to show you the rest of my books. But for today, we're just going to look at these four bookcases. This one is nonfiction. This one in the middle is adult fiction or classics and things like that. And the one in the corner here is young adult. We did recently move, so I haven't gotten around to painting my closet doors white yet. But I'll do that eventually. Juliet likes to come in here and sometimes she sleeps under my desk while I'm working. So let's just start at the beginning. On this shelf I have just some reference books. We like to do a lot of camping or traveling, so these books are really good. They're my favorite uh, reference or field guides. They do them by region, and there's one for every region except for the, Mid uh, the Midwest or Great Lakes states. So we take one of those with us anytime we go on vacation. Over here are books that have my name in them, either because I am published in them or I was an editor for those publications. This shelf is journals. I've been journaling, I think I started, this was my very first journal when I was 13 and all the way up until Today, I've been journaling in there. I read the Kingfisher History Encyclopedia cover to cover when I was 12. This is my bookmark collection. I like the National Parks ones that you can get, like this one, that have animals on them, and then on the back it tells you about whatever animal is on it. I have lots of NaNoWriMo bookmarks. I like bookmarks for my friends' published novels. And bookstores that I've been to. This collection used to be a lot bigger, but I called it recently. That's one of my favorites. And this one. Uh, shows the Atlantic Ocean in the winter and in the summer. On the next shelf down I just have some DS games, some audiobooks over here, and story cubes are really cool. These have cubes in them and you take them out and roll them. There's a different picture on every side and then you have to make up a story with the pictures that you roll. I use those in class a lot and sometimes for writing exercises even just for myself. This shelf here is my picture book collection. I have lots of the classics, Olivia, Eloise, um, lots of animal books, Stella Luna, and some of these, A Place for Turtles and The Eye of the Whale, I used in my extended critical essay, which is my critical thesis for my MFA. Uh, lots of dog books. Macduff. I love bats at the library. Um, Hungry Caterpillar, of course. These are baby lit books. They're by Jennifer Adams. She takes a classic adult novel or she does Shakespeare, there's Romeo and Juliet, and she turns them into board books for kids, so Romeo and Juliet is a counting primer, and 
It just takes different elements from the play and makes it into counting. Uh, my favorite one in that series is this one. It's a fashion primer and the pictures are so pretty and this one's really unique and different from a lot of the other books in the series. And then this shelf on the bottom is just oversized books that don't fit anywhere else. My nerd side comes out with this Star Wars collection here. A couple of Harry Potter books, a couple of Tolkien books, some general fantasy or history type books. Then I have some drawing how-to books, music books. Okay, so moving over to this wall of books over here. This top shelf is Christian nonfiction that I have mostly Bibles, devotional type books. And then the next shelf down is Christian, more um, nonfiction, like um, me some memoirs or some Christian biographies, Christian history, and let's see. This one I haven't actually read yet, but I'm really looking forward to reading it. Um, it's called Lit, and it's a Christian guide to reading books. So I'm interested to see if this is going to be... Um, helpful and I heard it was really good. The so next shelf down here is just general nonfiction. I collect uh, antique blue board Nancy Drew books so this was a really fascinating read about um, the Stratemeyer syndicate that started the Nancy Drew books and also published all of the Hardy Boys, Bobsy Twins and those kind of series back in the 30s and 40s. Um, and about all the different women who wrote Nancy Drew books under the pseudonym of Carolyn Keene. I have lots of books about books here. Some home decor slash DIY home renovation books. Lots of gardening books. Lots of gardening books. And some other general nonfiction Next shelf is more memoir type nonfiction. Um, I really like Bill Bryson. A Walk in the Woods is one of my favorite memoirs um, or creative nonfiction kind of nature books. I really like Annie Dillard for that too. Pilgrim at Tinker Creek and Teaching a Stone to Talk was really good. Um, Something's Rising is actually about um, mountaintop removal in Kentucky and the rest of Appalachia. It was written by a faculty member at the school where I got my MFA. I love A Movable Feast by Hemingway. He's one of my favorite Lost Generation writers. Lots of nature type books with Into the Wild and Bootstrapper is about a woman who lives on a Farm in Northern Michigan. Donald Miller, Wild, Essays of E.B. White. If I could choose any nonfiction writer to be compared to, it would be him. There's a quote by him that says, if I want to communicate anything with my writing, it is that I love the world. I was just talking about this Essays of E.B. White book, and I just had to sit down and tell you my favorite essay in here that I highly recommend reading, even if you don't want to read the whole book, which is good, is called Coon Tree, and it's just a great essay about the changing times. It was written in 1956, and the raccoons that live in the tree by his house in Maine and just the relationship he has with those raccoons. It's so good, especially if you're an animal lover or you're nostalgic for times gone by. But I'm just gonna read my favorite paragraph in this whole book, which is not from Coon Tree, it's from a different essay called The Railroad. And this is the last paragraph of that essay. 
In the old days, when the railroads were in their prime, you couldn't see Brewer from Exchange Street, but you could close your eyes and see the continent of America stretched out in front of you with the rails running on endlessly into the purple sunset as in an overwritten novel. I loved it when I couldn't see Brewer from Extreme Street. The rest of the view was so good. The next shelf down here is writing how-to books. Um, mostly over here I have a lot of the well-known books. Flannery O'Connor's Mystery and Manners, Writing Down the Bones, that kind of thing. The rest of the shelf is more textbook type writing books that I either used in class in undergrad or that I use now when I teach college writing. And the bottom shelf is just cookbooks, poetry, and I have one play at the end. Mary Oliver's This Poetry Book Dog Songs Will Make You Cry, whether you're a dog person or not. Next, I have the fiction bookcase here and I organize my fiction just in alphabetical order by the author's last name. The, the last shelf here is out of order because it's so little sh too short for a lot of books so I just put these short little mass market paperbacks down here. Um, more nerdy Star Wars books and then just some classics that I happen to have in this format. From the top, I love these Barnes & Noble, beautiful classics. Um, I'm a huge Brontes fan. Not such a big Jane Austen fan though, I know that's a debate among a lot of book lovers and I'm firmly in the Bronte camp when it comes to those writers. Water for Elephants was so good. I did my literary criticism project in undergrad on The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway, so I think that's why he's one of my favorites. My favorite Lewis novel is actually Till We Have Faces, um, which is a lesser known book that he wrote obviously overshadowed by Narnia, which I have read more times than I can count. I never finished The Casual Vacancy, <laughs> but the Cormoran Strike novels are pretty good. I tried reading Dracula in high school and I couldn't really get through it. I think I stopped after just a couple pages, but I picked it up again in college and read it all the way through. I couldn't put it down and it was one of the scariest books I've ever read. My well-worn copy of The Lord of the Rings. The Once and Future King by T.H. White. So much sadness and beauty. And the last shelf here is YA. And these are, again, just like fiction in alphabetical order by the author's last name. I love Sherman Alexie's The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian. So great. Highly recommend it. I didn't much care for The Maze Runner, actually. I have the first book here, but I never finished reading the series. On the other hand, I love this series right here by Cornelia Funk, the Inkheart series. This was one of my favorite books when I read it. I still have little marks, <laughs> markers in it marking just quotes I loved. It's definitely a book for people who love books. My favorite John Green novel is Paper Towns. I think it's far and away better than all of the rest of his books. 
The Fault in Our Stars, I know, was really close to his heart, but I think it was a little overwritten. Loved We Were Liars. This was one of my favorite books last year. Fangirl is so good. Oh, I love this. Another one of my favorites from the past couple years. Highly recommend that to anybody who loves either fantasy writing or just mainstream or even if you like fan fiction. Here I have a whole shelf devoted to Harry Potter. <laughs> um, the original... The original seven hardcover books. I don't have Tales of Beetle the Bard, but I do have these the original copies of Quidditch Through the Ages and Fantastic Beasts. And of course, I have The Cursed Child, which I firmly loved. To me, The Cursed Child was to the original Harry Potters as The Force Awakens was to the original Star Wars trilogy, which to me means that it was a success. And then I have the illustrated Sorcerer's Stone and plenty of room here to finish that collection. And then the last shelf, I love Gary Schmidt. Okay for now and the Wednesday Wars. And I don't have Orbiting Jupiter, but I think that was the last book I read that made me sob while I was reading. And then Jonathan Stroud, I actually am not a huge fan of the Bartimaeus trilogy, which is what I have on the shelf here, but I really love and highly recommend the Lockwood series. The fourth book is coming out in two weeks, and I can't wait to read it. They're perfect Halloween books. If you haven't read them, I highly recommend it. It's Lockwood and Company by Jonathan Stroud. The first book is The Shrieking Staircase, I think. Okay guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tour of the books I have on my bookcases in the library. Sometime I'll do a part two to this video and show you some of the books I keep in other parts of the house, including all of my middle grade and junior novels, the books that fall between picture books and YA. Until then, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe or like this video if you like talking about books and writing. That's what I talk about here on this channel and I would love to have your company in future videos. I try to post every other week. If you have something you'd like me to talk about, please leave me a message down below or you can find me on Twitter at I belong in a book and I'd love to know what you want to talk about. Also, you can tell me how you arrange your books at home, whether you do it by category like me or just alphabetize everything. I would love to hear how other people organize their libraries. I'll see you next time and thanks for watching. Cheers!